and they're packed into a stage of only 125 kilometres, so it's going to be hard and fast today. There's plenty of scope for attacking on the way to Le Semnoz, if anyone has the nerve or the legs, but by the time the race gets to the foot of the final climb, the likelihood is that his rivals will be racing each other for the podium places, recognising that Chris Froome has the top step to himself, although it's not a likelihood he allows himself to contemplate. It's just 125 kilometres. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a full-on race. Well, that's what I'm expecting anyway. This is Le Semnoz, up above the town of Annecy and up above the clouds. It's the fourth and final summit finish of this year's race. Chris Froome has won two of the other three, and the exception was Alp Duez, where he forgot his packed lunch and ran out of fuel. So it would take a brave man to attack the race leaders today, and the real battle on the final climb of the tour looks like being for the two other podium places and the King of the Mountains jersey. Here are the standings going into the final day of real racing. Alberto Contador is second at 5 minutes 11 which might as well be 51-11 for all the chance he has of making it up on Chris Froome. In fact, today's race is a lot simpler to read if we just take Froome out of it. There he is, gone, along with the men in 6th, 7th and 8th. Now we can see how tight things are between the four men behind him. Contador has just 21 seconds on Nairo Quintana, so his second place is far from secure. Quintana, in turn, has only a 12-second lead over Contador's teammate Roman Kreutziger. But Kreutziger will be less concerned with trying to get past the Colombian and fending off Joaquin Rodriguez, who's only 14 seconds back in fifth place. In fact, Contador to Rodriguez, second to fifth, is only 47 seconds. So he's the man with the most to gain from a big attack. Now, Chris Froome still holds the King of the Mountains lead by a point from Pierre Roland. Mikel Nieve and Nairo Quintana are both within striking distance too. So Roland and Nieve might go out for early points today, although the 21 available on the first five climbs are dwarfed by the 50 for the final summit. Once the race is through the intermediate sprint today, the theoretical possibility of anyone catching Peter Sagan in the green jersey competition will have been removed, and it just remains for him to wheelie all the way to the Champs-Élysées. The white jersey is decided, barring disaster. Nairo Quintana has a lead of just less than five minutes over Michal Kwiatkowski and is a far better climber. So a sensational tour debut for him that could still get better, although he's playing down his chances of moving up the podium a step. Se sufre, pero se goza y bueno, estamos ahora bien. Esperamos terminar eh, como estamos. Another spectacular setting for the penultimate stage of the tour: Annecy, the town, and the lake. With today's finish pretty much directly above and the race simply taking the scenic route to include five other climbs. And possibly bigger crowds at the start than at the top of the climb, although with only 15 kilometres between the two, if you take the direct road, some of them might be trying to see both. Now, we saw a bit of Damiano Cunigo on the road yesterday, after which confirmation came that he's one of 27 riders and staff from Lampre Merida who will be indicted as part of a long-running doping investigation in Italy. Although so long has it been running that the news barely seemed to cause a ripple on the race, which must be galling for Chris Froome after all the scrutiny he's suffered simply for leading the thing. Now, the first jersey of the day to be decided was green. Peter Sagan, Mark Cavendish and Andre Greipel all knew and staged a comedy sprint to market, taking three, four and five points respectively behind the day's breakaway. That left Sagan with a lead of 101 points over Cavendish with only 85 left in the race. As expected, Pierre Roland attacked pretty much from the gun in search of mountains points, wearing the leader's jersey, of course, only because Chris Froome is wearing yellow. He took five points over the first climb at the second category, Cote de Pouget, then picked up points on the next three to take his tally to 113, a nine-point lead over Froome and 15 over Nairo Quintana. But don't forget, there are 50 for the winner of the final climb. And on the subject of finality, this may well be the last mountain stage of Jens Voigt's tour career, which he marked by attacking off the front of the day's escape group. Or perhaps he just did it because that's what he does whenever he gets the chance. As we pick up commentary, he's on the climb of the Mont Revard, being chased by the rest of the day's break, while the big names wait in the main field for the final climb. An amazing ascent now by Jens Voigt, and take your hat off to the oldest man in the Tour de France, 
as he heads up now to top Mont Revar, the last first category climb of this year's Tour de France. He's going to get maximum points in the King of the Mountains, and it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's the show, it's the spectacle, it's the panache of a guy like Jens Voigt at 41 years of age coming to the summit of this climb. And I wonder if we'll see him back at the Tour de France again next year because he said if he gets another contract, well, he'll race even at 42 years of age. Well, he doesn't want pushes because actually, although he's not asking for a push, the referees would penalise him for that. Just around the corner, Jens Voigt is going to top out and he's not going to ease up either. A little check over his shoulder. It's a good downhill descent now and then it runs across the valley to a little town called Cantal and that's where they start the climb to the finish of the mountains in this year's Tour de France. Jens Voigt will not wait for anybody. He's going for the win. Over the top of that mountain there, Jens Voigt is a star on today's stage. And you know, he's, he's pulling away from the nine-man chasing group behind him that contains Burkhardt, Gilbert and Van Garderen. They are now at two minutes and 22 seconds to the German, and they're only hovering a minute in front of the main field. At 10 points for the moment, moves him up to 12th place overall in the King of the Mountains competition. He's been in a number of breaks this year, which has seen him score points. Pierre Holland will want to get as many points as he can. Don't forget Igor, Igor Anton, we should see him go over the top, is ahead of this group. There he is, straight through, he gets second place over the mountains. Well, 38 seconds, I thought that gap was starting to extend, Phil, and that must have been a false time check we got from Race Radio at 15 seconds. Anyway, 38 to 40 seconds is going to be tough for this man to pull back on the descent because Jens is a daredevil descender as well as being a powerful bike rider. So, Roland just checking who's going to challenge him here. Are oh, the interest? I'm surprised that Riblon hasn't, although is he starting to now? Gilbert looking over his shoulder straight at him. Pierre Roland wants to continue building points because it could all go wrong for him. He's six points for this. He'd have liked the ten, but he'd have to be content with six. He goes clear of the field. Yes, yeah, so if he gets across the line for those six points, that'll take his total to 119. But there's a big stack piled up at the end of today's stage when we climb up to Semnoz. He gets it quite easily, no challenge at all, and Riblon is the next rider over, so he'll take away four points. So Riblon has 98 points now, Roland has 119. As we look down in the bottom there, you can see the lake of Ansi. Beautiful lake uh, down in the bottom. And the main field are now cresting the summit of uh, one of the high spots of the Massif de Bauges. Jens Voigt picking his way down Mont Revar now. And he's got a nice long descent. He's coming off 1,463 metres. Then he'll descend all the way down to 618 metres. A little bit of a valley road with just undulations. And then he climbs to the finishing line at Semnoz. Three minutes 40 for the peloton over the top. Well, as we now look at about 42 kilometres to go to the finish, uh, watch for their pace uh, warming up at the front end of the main field as Movistar and Katusha start to turn up the screws. Yes, turn up might not be the quite, quite the word. I think they've tried to keep this group together to have showdown on Semnos. And that's what it will be now because that's the only hill left. Here comes the move by TJ Van Garden. It's on the slope upwards, but we're not quite officially on the climb yet. But Van Garden's decided it is his time to make his play because the peloton is closing in and he's taking a roll on with him and the Vulias. Well, the breakaway as they approach the lower slopes, they haven't yet started Semnoz, but the attacks certainly have. Yeah, but look at this, Phil. The gap is closing down very, very quickly to the yellow jersey group, and there it is. They're fractioning at the front end of the main field. It's uh, Konstantin Sifsov now who does the pacemaking for Chris Froome. Behind him, it's Richie Port, and they're all scrambling for the wheel of the Skytrain. 
Well, this is amazing. It has been Mobistar who set all of the pace, and it's the Sky Boys who have gone to the front as we head up to the last climb in the Alps. Is Chris Froome going to go out with a win at the top of this mountain? What a show of panache that would be. Philippe Gilbert looks over his shoulder. He's tried to set this up for his teammate, TJ Van Garden, who's a little bit further up the road, but there's not very much time between them and the front end of the main field this afternoon. With just 12 kilometres to go, a buffer of 5 minutes and 11 seconds, it's safe to say that Chris Froome has won the Tour de France, but is he going to try and win the stage as well? He's been the most dominant leader in years of the Tour de France because he's already won three stages of this three-week race. Well, let's not forget the battle for the podiums is going to be very close indeed. These are the three chasers, uh, Roland, TJ Van Garde, Vuermos, they're just behind Jens Voigt. But there's 47 seconds between second place in the Tour de France and fifth place in the Tour de France. And that's what the battle will be all about today. But look how small that peloton is going. This is back up to the front now. TJ Van Garderen goes again, trying to steal the show for BMC and the United States. Vuillard and Roland haven't really got the answer to that attack by TJ. Well, he's now looking at 11.3 kilometres to go. Uh, is it nice not now the right time, Phil, for me to tell you that we haven't reached the start of the climb proper? No, it's just a steady slope, but we're still looking for the banner that will say 10.7 kilometres on the climb of Semnoz. Well, that was Andrew Talansky as well with those two riders from Omega Pharma Quickstep. And along this little false flat, before we actually get to the start proper, Team Sky have literally blown up the race. Igor Anton has gone back rather quickly from the front here now. And already uh, Team Sky have done the high speed. This field is down to about 12 riders here. David Lopez now is the Spanish rider on Sky who comes to the front to look after Chris Froome. Now one, there's his banner, 10.7 kilometres to go for Jens Voigt. Jens Voigt takes them to the foot of the last climb in the Alpine mountains of the week. And this is a climb no one's been up before in the Tour de France. TJ Van garden has been picked up by the two Frenchmen. Pierre Roland there one must be wondering, have I got a chance to survive off the front end of the peloton this afternoon? Because he needs to get himself into the top five on today's stage if he wants to win that King of the Mountains classification. But I think Team Sky are really trying to set something up for Froome here. And look at the damage they have done. Well, at the moment, it is Lopez the pacemaker. Then is Chris Froome. And behind Chris Froome is faithful friend Richie Port waiting to take up the pacemaking when he's called through. The white jersey of the youngster from Colombia, Quintana. They are now at 10.7 in this chase group uh, behind Jens Voigt. Well, Jens Voigt is doing a sterling job there. It's 43 seconds between Jens Voigt and the three chasers. And we don't yet have a gap back to the main field with the yellow jersey, but I reckon it can't be very much more than 15 or 20 seconds. Andy Schleck comes up behind Andrew Talansky there, as well as uh, Bacalons is up here too. Well, in fact, it's only about 20 seconds between the yellow jersey group and the group of Van Garden, Roland and Villermoz. As we now start to see David Lopez, this is a battle between Movistar and Sky now, as Chris Froome is looking for the wheel of the rider here from Movistar. Still got Richie Port on his wheel, then it's Quintana, then it's Alberto Contador, then Kruziga, all the big men. So, as we watch here, Movistar trying to get in front. Now, Paul, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've got Chris Froome, he's made the first move, he's shed all of his teammates, but normally now we would see Richie Port in front of Chris Froome. Do you think he's setting it up for Richie to win the stage? What class that would show yeah. if he could do something like that. These two have worked so much together throughout this race that Richie Port may well be given the chance to try and get the stage victory for himself, led to the top by Chris Froome. There's going to be many secrets revealed on this final climb today to the unknown summit of Semnos as far as the Tour de France is concerned. And that the one man that they picked up those three, so they've come up to the Pierre Roland, TJ Van Garden who used his team to try and get him clear, but he's got mixed up in a different type of uh, storm here as the yellow jersey comes up on his back wheel. I was just thinking, though, the ride being done by Jens Voigt cannot be underestimated. It has been such a great performance. Ten kilometres to go, and Voigt is still ahead of the Tour de France. This man trying to win the greatest moment of his life this stage, but the chase now is only 50 seconds behind, and it includes the men that matter in the Tour. 
Very, very rarely do you see Jens Voigt with a grimace of pain quite as bad as that one, but he knows what's happening behind him. He knows he's got the best men in the Tour de France chasing him at 50 seconds. He's going to put them into a spot of bother this afternoon as we now see this group being reduced very, very dramatically. Of the riders in second, third, fourth and fifth, they're all beneath us now at 10 kilometres to go. The 47-second buffer, which covers Contador, Quintana, Kreuzinger and Rodriguez, they are all here. This is the battle as to who will finish second to fifth in the Tour de France. Uh, Chris Froome has shown us right now he's heading for victory tomorrow in Paris. Well, Mollema has gone off the back there with uh, Jakob Fulsang, and this group at the front here is becoming smaller and smaller while still Jens Voigt survives. I've got it at 42 seconds now. It is absolutely amazing that uh, riders from Great Britain have never won the Tour de France in 99 years, and Bradley Wiggins wins last year. This year, Chris Froome will win the Tour now. The, and the polka dot jersey here in trouble on King of the Mountains. Well, uh, just jump, jumping past him very quickly, there was uh, Daniel Moreno from uh, Team Katusha trying to get it back up to help his team leader, Joachim Rodriguez. It's Rui Costa is doing the pacemaking on the front of that group, Phil, the man who won the stage yesterday in the downpour down into the Grand Bournon. 40 seconds the gap now to the man in our screen here, Jens Voigt. This is the select group, Valverde looks over at Rui Costa, quickly Richie Poor picks it up, he takes with him the yellow jersey of Chris Froome. Alejandro Valverde is a very prolific winner, Rui Costa's disappeared now from this group, Phil, his job done for the day. Alejandro Valverde wants to set this up for the man in the white jersey there, he wants to crack Alberto Contador, he wants, he wants his teammate Quintana to move from third to second place in the overall. But we can now see Krutiga starting to crack there, 94. It's almost ironic that the man behind him in the overall standings is that man in the red and white there, Joaquin Rodriguez. Well, Alejandro Valverde is the man doing the damage. It's still just 10 seconds to Jens Voigt. He will know once this is done that it's over, but he's the man who lit the blue touch paper to start setting off the fireworks here this afternoon. And what a way to do it. But now we've got a great battle here. Valverde, by the way, throughout his career has won 100 professional races. He's a great competitor here, not even thinking about himself. I'm sure he would love to win this stage, but he's got faith in the one man behind him in his own team in the white jersey, Nairo Quintana. When he had a mechanical problem, a broken wheel, he was in second place in this year's Tour de France. He lost 10 minutes that day and with it all hope. Now he's trying to ride for the man in white, his young new teammate, and try and get him on the podium in Paris, Quintana. He sits third at the moment, but he is only 12 seconds ahead of fourth, but Kreuzinger is gone. So he's just got to be worried about the location now of the rider in the red jersey, Rodriguez. Rodriguez on the other side is moving he's too. He's gone through on the inside and Quintana's marking him because Rodriguez is the one man who can knock Quintana out of third place in the Tour de France. And if Contador doesn't respond, then Quintana will be looking for second place in the Tour de France. Well, Rodriguez, you see, Phil, let's not forget, Chris Froome doesn't need to chase those riders. No, he's got a bigger... But he is. But he's going to. This is the pride of the yellow jersey on his shoulders now. Well, Look at Chris the speed Froome he's is going, going to by. Win the stage. This man has accelerated with his familiar high cadence and there's no reaction from the men behind him. Yes, but look at this, what these two riders in second and third position are doing. They are getting rid of Alberto Contador. You're looking there, Phil, at second and third in the overall standings at the end of the race. Look at this, he just jumps out of the saddle, accelerates so quickly. I think he got the nod there from Richie Port and said, go for it, mate. Well, he goes and joins the front runners here. He's, on, he's behind the riders who currently occupy third and fifth in the Tour de France, but they're going to be second and third unless Alberto Contador can cross that gap. And here is Contador now uh, being watched over by Richie Port. Contador is in great danger of losing second place in the Tour. Well, there's only 26 seconds rep separates Joachim Rodriguez from... Uh... 
Alberto Contador, and he's at 47 seconds, but this man now is trying to win the stage. This is the steepest part of the climb, 10.5% as Rodriguez and Quintana come back to the wheel of Chris Froome. Because if they can hold Chris Froome, they will finish second and third. You could be looking in the correct order of the first three riders in the Tour de France tomorrow in Paris. But the other two have got to hold on to Chris Froome. That may not be possible. That was a painful 10.5% gradient there for those riders. As uh, Now we've got Alberto Contador. He's 10 seconds behind that group in front of him. That means he's very, very close to losing his second place to Quintana. Quintana was only looking for 11 seconds at the start of the day. And this is the other man who's suffering too. Contador's teammate, Kreuzinger, started the day in fourth place. Could be finishing the day in fifth. Well, lots of damage, sir. There's uh, number 89, is uh, Riblon, winner of the Alpe d'Huez, uh, Molima, Fulsang, all riders in the top 10 in the overall standings. Well, at the moment, Phil, Contador is 24 seconds behind the trio at the front of the race, uh, Rodriguez, uh, Quintana and Froome. Well, a little bit of a chat here. This is a replay, but it's just happened. Well, Froome, see, Froome, Froome knows what's at stake, he knows what they're racing for. And he has no reason to work with these guys at all. As far as he's concerned, he's consolidating his position in the overall standings at this race. While Contador may well be just recovering a bit I because he he's is. pulled himself back to 22 seconds. And he won't get any help either from Richie Port. And Krutiger is actually riding himself back too because he's at 33 seconds just behind his team leader. It's a good long back on. Molema and Fulsang. 6.6 kilometers to go now. Well, Krutiger has climbed his way back to his team leader, and he's now going to go by and set the pace for Alberto Contador here over these final few kilometers. He realizes what's at stake. Doesn't make that much of a difference for Krutiger whether he's fourth or fifth in the overall standings, but for the man behind him, he's talking about the podium, he's thinking about the podium. And he's been in podium position number two for two weeks, more or less, Alberto Contador. Round the corner, though, but not very far round the corner. Chris Froome, Rodriguez and Quintana. The man on the right who never, ever lets us know how he is really feeling. Well, Froome now, Phil, is just quite happy to set his own tempo on a climb like this. Sometimes that's better, especially when you come to the steep parts of a climb. So he just sits there, and he's out of the saddle climbing, which is a very different climbing style than we've seen from Chris Froome over the last three weeks of this race. Rodriguez said for two weeks he wanted a podium finish in Paris. It's come down to the last climb on the mountains of the Tour de France. Kreuzinger has suffered all sorts to get back to his team captain, and he's trying to bring Contador back into play. He's trying to defend second place in the Tour. Well, the gap now is 37 seconds between the three-man leading group and the Contador group. So Contador only has 10 seconds left in the bag to keep himself on the podium tomorrow night. This is Alejandro Valverde. He's tried, he tried in the early part of this climb to set something up for his own teammate. He started the day in ninth place in the overall standings at 40 minutes and 56 seconds. Now imagine, Phil, if he hadn't lost 10 minutes on that road down to Santa Moron. Valverde is in fourth place on the road. He's actually riding ahead of Alberto Contador. Well, Valverde at 26. Uh, Contador at 40 seconds, Phil, means he is actually, at the moment, lost his podium position in the Tour de France to the man in front, the man in front, and you can see, of course, that is Rodriguez. Now, they're going up three of them, Paul. They are racing to decide the podium of the Tour de France, those three riders. Is there still room for Quintana in his first tour to leave these two behind? Yes, there's a very good possibility for him to win the stage. He's not going to trouble Chris Froome. Froome is five minutes and 11 seconds ahead at the start of the day. But Quintana would certainly like to get himself the stage victory. And uh, somebody sent me a photograph a little while ago, Phil, that in fact, Quintana's family are at home in Colombia actually watching the television live this afternoon, and they will be spurring him on. We are looking at the top three riders in the Tour right here. Rodriguez knows that he's going to give his all. He'd like to hold back and try and win himself the stage here this afternoon, but it's more important for him as we go past five kilometres to go. It's more important for him, I think, in his mind to get onto the podium at the Tour. Joachim Rodriguez has finished high in his home Tour of Spain, but he's never ridden like this in the Tour de France. Valverde is ahead of Contador and Kreuzinger as he keeps up this relentless pressure, but he's still 45 seconds behind those three riders. 
who are writing the podium tonight as they climb up Semnos for the very first time in tour history. Well, Valverde will be dropping down into fourth place overall and his teammate Krujica down into fifth place overall at the end of today's stage. So as we look at these three riders, if the tour was to finish right now, we would have a situation where Froome would win by over five and a half minutes from Quintana, Rodriguez would go to third, Contador would hold fourth, and Groisinger would be in fifth. Looking into the eyes of Alberto Contador, who at the moment has lost his second place in the Tour de France. His teammate in front of him, Kreuzinger, is the man just behind him, so he will ride in fourth place overall. Kreuzinger is down to fifth, and Valverde, unfortunately, he lost ten minutes when he broke a wheel. He is still riding high. He's currently ninth in the Tour de France, and I don't think he can get the time to make any progress on that. Rodriguez's pacemaking has destroyed Alberto Contador down the mountain now because the gap is very, very much there. They're saying 119 is the gap as Rodriguez rides the third place in the Tour de France. This man from Colombia at 23 is riding to second place in the Tour de France. Chris Froome, he could walk to the top now and not lose all of his race lead. He's that close to the finish. He's going to win the Tour de France. Yeah, but he looks like he's in a spot of bother there as he sits on the wheel of uh, Quintana. For the first time, Quintana looks to be struggling a fraction, but I don't suppose you could uh, expect anything else after three weeks of a very, very tough race. Swinging back to an attack here by uh, Christophe Reblon. Well, this is uh, much further down the slope where the gap between the three leaders to Alejandro Val uh, to Alberto Contador is a minute and 20 seconds, while Alejandro Valverde is at 54 seconds. He was the rider who was the French hero. He's the only Frenchman to have won the stage of the Tour de France in this special centennial edition. Amazing to see that Kruziger, who is actually putting his own teammate into a little bit of difficulty there, as it looks like Andrew Talansky, the American, is coming across the gap there behind with the blue helmet. So at the front, uh, Rodriguez, uh, Talansky is joining uh, Contador and Kruziger as Richie Port is still marshalling both of them. Yes, it's going to be a long, hard battle. The gap down to Contador now is a minute and 32 seconds. Now, the interesting thing about the uh, front end of the race, Phil, uh, Whoever goes across the line in first place between uh, Chris Froome and Nairo Quintana could be the winner of the King of the Mountains at the end of the Tour de France, and I'm pretty sure that Chris Froome has calculated that. A fitting end to the centennial edition of the Tour de France, the competitions being decided on the eve of the long journey to Paris tonight and tomorrow morning when the race restarts on its final stage from the Palace of Versailles to the Champs-Élysées. Froome is just allowing two riders in front of him now to battle out second and third in the Tour de France. Well, they've pretty much ridden themselves into second and third place overall. I don't think at any time now can uh, Rodriguez put time between himself and Quintana. He just wants to consolidate on his third position in the overall standings. As they come around a left-hand bend, they're approaching the two kilometres to go marker now, and it is still Rodriguez on the front, followed by Quintana, followed by Chris Froome. Well, Rodriguez is giving his all here. This is a phenomenal performance by this rider, Phil. He always said he wanted to come to the Tour de France. In fact, when his team wasn't uh, in the World Pro Tour schedule, he was thinking about changing teams so much he wanted to come to the Tour de France this year when his team at one point were possibly not going to be selected. Zelansky there, 178, he's now sitting on the wheel of Richie Port. Roman Krutzica has job done for the day, he can do no more. But when you look at uh, Joaquim Rodriguez here, Paul, he's never enjoyed the Tour de France, but this year he said he wanted to come. He's only ridden it once before, back in 2010. He finished eighth when he was not really expected to do much more than that. He won the stage. Now he's back and he's about to finish third. And do you remember who he beat on that stage up to Mon? It was a certain Alberto Contador. He made an inspired jump from the pack. It's a very steep uh, climb up to the aerodrome at Mond, and an absolutely typical Rodriguez win. Looks like Froome is starting to contemplate. Look at the pain written all over the face of uh, Rodriguez here as he bobs the top end of his body. I have to say, Quintana still looks very cool. 
really ready to make that move. I was expecting him to make the move. Maybe he's just happy to be up there in second place in the overall standings. Wants to match the move by Rodriguez there. Froome will very, very shortly be seeing the one kilometer to go banner. Just one kilometer left to go to the summit of this climb of Semnoz. Froome, his yellow helmet, his yellow jersey, his yellow handlebar tape. He is the leader of the Tour de France. He leads the race by, from Contador by 5 minutes 11 seconds. Contador has lost more than a minute. Froome is now going for the victory, the fourth stage victory. He's winning through the mountains of this tour as he now goes clear and he's going to try and win with Panache. But look at Quintana go after him. The man with the white jersey, the best young rider in the race. His first visit, he's hooked up with Chris Froome at one kilometre to go. Well, Quintana is looking for the victory. This was the move of Chris Froome just a few moments ago. The Acceleration from the rear and almost immediately when Rodriguez couldn't match it Quintana comes straight out of his slipstream as well and right up to the yellow jersey and remember whichever one of these two win Quintana is going now if he wins the stage he also wins the king of the mountains he also wins the best young rider but he'll finish second in the Tour de France to Chris Froome well we had said Phil since the very start the first time we saw this man in the mountains that he was a superb climber and look at the way he's dancing away from everybody else the first day we saw him riding in the Pyrenees, he misjudged it to the finish, he ran out of stamina, and why shouldn't he at 23 years of age? But now, on the very last climb in the Alps, he is showing us the talent he was born with in the high country of Colombia. He's riding to the victory today, he's riding to the king of the mountains, he's riding to the best white jersey, and he'll finish second tomorrow in Paris to this man. Well, uh, this man has done a lot, but he makes it so easy, 128 to Quintana. He makes it look as if it's like just a walk in the park this afternoon. He will see that banner, and that banner is going to indicate to him 500 metres to go. 500 metres, half a kilometre of what has been one of the hardest journeys through the Alps in many, many years of the Tour de France. As he's cheered all the way up to the top of Semnoz now, the new face of the Tour as he's gone around that corner with ever such speed he's out of sight he's going to a lone victory he has tried every day through the mountains and this was his last shot and it's a success well the team had the confidence in this man right from the very get-go this morning they did all of the pacemaking they're leaving the yellow jersey to have his own moment on this mountain of Semnoz they can take whatever time they can gain now it will make no difference Chris Froome has survived this last vital day in the Tour de France. This man at 23 is about to win his first ever stage in the Tour de France. And what a race for him, Paul. He wins with it the King of the Mountains. He wins the white jersey as well. This little climber is one of the best climbers we've ever seen ride a bike. And let's not forget, Phil, uh, just in the way that Lucho Herrera came to the Tour de France, he stamped his authority all over the event, and second place at the end of the day tomorrow. He turns out to be one of the most popular riders. Uh, those in the know tip this man to likely win his first Tour. Well, he's just won his first stage, and he is the King of the Mountains. The race for the third place podium finish is going to go to Joachim Rodriguez here in only his second Tour de France. As he comes up now, the clock is counting. That's good enough for Quintana to finish second. Rodriguez will finish third. And the man who will win the Tour de France, Chris Froome, almost a smile on his face. He's let the other two have their moments, but he's the one who will stand on top of the podium on the Champs-Élysées tomorrow. This man, I think, was very important in trying to set up the win for his teammate here this afternoon because this is Alejandro Valverde. He's in fourth place on the road, and I think he's going to move up a couple of places in the overall standings tonight. And it looks to me as though Richie Port has gone forward of the rest of that group, and the man who has ridden alongside Chris Froome, they are the best of mates, they are personal friends because of their ability. Some say one day Richie Port will get the victory for Australia, but today he's seen his team captain do the job, and he still had the legs, Paul, to cross the line in fifth. Now, Andrew Talansky, this young American from Florida, from Miami, has done the ride of his life in his first tour as well. Sixth place for him, and he'll climb up into a top ten finish in the tour. With Alberto Contador finishing on his wheel and slipping a couple of places back down the top ten towards him. 
There's the result, a brilliant stage win for Nairo Quintana ahead of Joaquin Rodriguez and Chris Froome. The top three riders on the final mountain stage of the Tour riding away from the rest to decide the top three on the podium in Paris. Quintana's teammate Alejandro Valverde came in fourth and in fifth, ready to celebrate the winner of the teammate of the Tour Award, Richie Porte. Yeah, I think uh, it was a brilliant worked out so well for us. Um, we knew that Perito and uh, Quintana were also up for you know, and uh, that worked well for us. And look, I think uh, it's brilliant for me to see my good mate Prumi win. But to be honest, I'm also happy to see those other two guys on, on the podium because I think that's just correct. Uh, you know, Quintana, I think he deserved exactly what he got. And what he got was more than any rider in this race other than the winner. Three trips up onto the podium today for Nairo Quintana for the stage win, which confirmed him as the winner of the white jersey of best young rider, and also the winner of the King of the Mountains competition, one of the best tour debuts we've seen for decades, and an indication that we and Colombia are looking at a future tour winner. Sí, es increíble lo que está pasando. Estoy muy feliz porque eh, las victorias han llegado eh, gracias a todo mi equipo que me ha apoyado, que me lleva siempre. Eh, la verdad que es un equipo fenomenal que vale la pena estar aquí y les agradezco mucho a ellos porque son los que me han traído hasta aquí. En internet hemos visto una fotografía de su, de su padre en cómita llorando al mirar la pantalla, ver su hijo hacer esas prodezas. Debe ser muy, muy orgulloso. Sí, pienso que, que debe ser bastante orgulloso para, para él, para la familia, para toda Colombia que, que me está viendo y espero que esté tranquilo porque no es bueno darle tanta alegría a este hombre. Conscious that anything less would be letting down his public, Peter Sagan pulled a wheelie coming across the line and threw in a skid for good measure. He's confirmed as the winner of the green jersey competition for the second year running. The most Mark Cavendish and Andre Greipel can do on the Champs-Élysées tomorrow is cut into his margin of victory. So, we have a finishing order established, which is just as well because there's only the celebratory stage to Paris still to come. Chris Froome has won this race by five minutes and three seconds from Nairo Quintana. Joaquin Rodriguez completes his set of Grand Tour podiums with third place. Alberto Contador slips to fourth and his teammate Roman Kreutziger to fifth, although they will both be on the podium in Paris tomorrow because Saxo Tinkoff have won the team prize. The team that produced the winning rider, though, was Sky. There are dreams that go into fulfilment and often for you it must be almost impossible to put into words, but the sacrifice that goes into winning a tour is immense, isn't it? It's, it's unbelievable. If I... If I think back and think of the the journey I've taken to get here and the, the where, where I started, it's just I can't get my head around it. It's it's really special. I mean, also if you look at the battle we've had during this tour, it may may look easy having a five-minute advantage, but um, I can ask any of our teammates. Each and every one of us have buried ourselves to try and to try and get this jersey and, and hold on to it. It's it really has been an amazing journey for us. Chris, there are people in your background, uh, there are Michelle, your, your family, who mean everything to you, I guess, and they'll be watching these interviews, these images. What will be going through their mind, do you think? Oh, there, there are so many people who have made so many sacrifices and, and taught me so much along the way uh, to be able to get here, and um, I, I owe them a lot. I really owe them a lot of thanks, and um, I hope they can share in this with me too. It is the ultimate in cycling. There really is not much that you can do to top this, except, I guess, come back next year and win it again. <laughs> I mean, this is definitely something I'd like to target uh, e each year the Tour de France. It's an amazing event, um, but this one being the, the 100th edition is really is special. Uh, it was, it just feels like everything has been thrown at us this year in terms of the parkour, the teams, the, the weather. Um, so yeah, to be to be sitting here going into the last stage tomorrow with five minutes, that's uh, I'm speechless. Well, I know I'm being wrapped up, but I want to ask you one more question. Pick one moment, Chris, one defining moment from this race. Winning up on top of one two, that's uh, got to be the, the most special memory I, I can take away from this race.
about as good as it gets in cycling. Well done, Chris. Thank you. And with that, he continued his warm down, already aggregating marginal gains for next year's Tour Challenge. And it was a challenge for Chris Froome. He overcame much more than his winning margin of five minutes would suggest and overcame it brilliantly, both with the help of his teammates and without when he had to. All with the minimum of public fuss.